Hi, and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking heart loop text animation using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new document. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine and you can leave everything else just as is. And now I'm in Adobe Illustrator firstly. So I'm just gonna click on create. The next thing that we need to do is we need to come over here and find the rounded rectangle tool and we just need to draw a rounded rectangle. Now, you wanna kinda of get the thickness something similar to that. I'm just gonna change the color to red so we can see it a bit better. And then you can see these dots over here where you can change how rounded you want that rectangle. So I'm gonna put it all the way down until I have something that looks like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the selection tool until I see that icon. I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees that way. So I'm gonna hold shift and do that. Now what I need to do is I need to press Command C to copy and Command and Shift V to paste in place. Or you can also go to uh, edit paste in place as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that rotation tool, hold Shift again and put it to the other side. So I don't know, 45 degrees the other way. So now once we have that, that's our basic shape. What we need to do is we need to highlight it all. You need to open up your Pathfinder settings. And if you don't have your Pathfinder settings, you can go to Window, uh, Pathfinder. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on Divide. And so once we've done that, now I can actually click on these sides of the shapes and just get rid of the parts that I don't need. And for everything else, I'm just gonna go back to my Pathfinder and click Unite. And now I have a heart shape. Now I don't want a stroke, so I'm gonna get rid of the stroke and all I want is just the heart. So once you've done that, then you can save that as an Adobe Illustrator file and then we'll take it into After Effects. So now we're in After Effects. Now the first thing that we need to do is we just need to import our composition. So I'm just gonna go right click import file and I'm gonna find my heart illustrator file and I'm just gonna import it as a footage and I'm just gonna press okay. So now we have one composition called heart with the heart illustrator file in there. So the first thing that we need to do on this is we need to just shorten the time a little bit. So we'll shorten it down to let's say about three seconds. All right, and then what we need to do is we need to set up the scale animation. So we're gonna press S on our keyboard for scale. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch. I'm gonna bring down the first value to let's say about three. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to about two seconds and then I'm just going to increase it until it goes off the screen. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to fix this quality issue. So to do that, we need to make sure that we see our continuously rasterize icon over here and click it and that fixes that. And then I'll continue to move that until it's off the screen. So something like that. So now if I preview that, now we have that simple heart animation moving just like that. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to search for an effect called fill and I'm just going to go to my effect controls and I'm just gonna change this. So I'm gonna get my colors from Color Hunt. So this is the color palette that I'm going to use, these three colors here. So all I'm gonna do is click on that and bring it back into After Effects. So now I'm just gonna paste the pink color in there and now I can see that that has changed to pink. And that's looking pretty good. So now what we need to do is we just need to duplicate that and repeat that process again. So Control D or Command D to, to duplicate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit because I'm gonna offset this by roughly around about 10 frames. So I'm just gonna zoom in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to change the color again. So I'm gonna get my second color and then I'm gonna paste it into here. And so now if you preview that, so now you have two sets of hearts moving forward. So to do it again, all we need to do is just command or control D. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I can move that to let's say 10 frames over to the right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color again. And so I'm just gonna paste that color in there. And so now we have three sets of colors and that's looking pretty good. 
And so now once we have that, what we need to do now is we need to take all those three by holding shift and highlighting all of them and then pressing command D. And then what I'm going to do is while they're selected, I'm just going to bring them up until they get all the way at the top. And then so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to offset that also by about 10 frames. So now we should be at around about one second. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do that again. So control D and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring them up and I'm just going to move it over, let's say another 10 frames. And so what you can do is you can also hold shift and shift will, you know, snap it to every kind of five frames. So you just have to do that twice. And so now once we have that, now we have three sets of colors looping and you've successfully created this really cool heart looping animation but we're not just there yet so now what we need to do is we need to highlight all the layers and we don't want it to start when it's black like this so what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that it fills the entire screen so we'll start at somewhere around there so now that we've dragged it to here so now what we have to do is we have to find this white heart over on this side as well. So it will probably be somewhere around like that. So roughly around about the one second mark or maybe one frame over. And then what we need to do is we just need to bring the work area to that point there. And now if we preview that, we would have created a seamless loop. And so, yeah, just play around with where the frame actually starts because if you kind of stuff it up, then uh, it will kind of be a little bit noticeable. But anyways, once you're happy with that, what we need to do now is we need to render that. So I'm just gonna go to my render settings. So I'm gonna go to composition, add to render queue. So I'm just going to call it heart.mov and I'm just going to click render. So now that we've exported our heart loop, what we need to do is we need to import it back. So I'm just going to go to import file and I'm going to find my heart loop animation in there. Now it's no good to us as it is because it's only one second. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that heart composition. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on the heart MOV that I just created and go to interpret footage, go to main. And then I'm just going to loop it, let's say 10 times. And so now if I create a new composition, 1920 by 1080 pixels, 30 frames at 10 seconds, press OK. Now when I drag the heart.mov in there, now you can see that it loops for 10 seconds. And that's exactly what we want. So once we've done that, then what we need to do is we need to add some text. So I'm just going to come over here and add a new text layer. Now the font that I'm using is Insaney Burger and all I'm going to do is write my word in here. So once I have my word, I can just move it to the middle of the composition and I'm just going to lower the size of the word and then just go back to a line and then put it in there like that. So. Once I have that, the next thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that the text layer is on top of the heart loop and then I need to come down to track mat and then I can create an alpha track mat just like that. So now that I have that, if you want to scale that up, you know, you can or you can also go back in here and, you know, make it a little bit bigger if you want. Just make sure that you align it again once you are finished. So what that looks like now is now we have this cool little kind of uh, effect happening within the text of those words. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to pre-compose that. So I'm going to highlight both those things and I'm just going to pre-compose it and call it text. All right. And so now once we have that, then what we can do is we can create a new solid and we're just going to call it background. And I'm going to put it underneath. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the effect called gradient ramp. And then with the colors that I've got from color hunt, I'm just going to add that into my effect controls. So for this color, I'm just going to maybe use maybe this color and this color over here. Cool. 
So now I'm pretty happy with how that gradient looks. If you want to move it from side to side, I guess you can, but I'm, I'm happy with that. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm just going to go back to the text and I'm just going to add some uh, drop shadow. And I'm just going to make the drop shadow a bit more, you know, kind of in your face. So I'll bring it up to maybe, let's say, even like something like 28. Something like that will be fine. If you want to make it darker, you can just change the opacity here, but I'm, I'm happy with something around about 50%, 60%. So the next thing that we need to do is we just need to animate this as well. So to animate the text, I'm just going to use an expression. So if you search the internet for bounce expression, you will find this little piece of code. So I'm going to paste this in the description. So all we're going to do is we're just going to copy that and put it back into After Effects. So now that we have our text on our screen, what we need to do is we need to animate it. So we're going to do a simple scale animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press S on my keyboard for scale. I'm going to move forward to about, let's say one second. I'm going to hit the stopwatch and that's going to be our 100%. Then I'm going to move to the end and I'm just going to press zero. So now this will just scale in just like that, but we're going to make it look a little bit better. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold Alt or Option and then I'm going to click on that stopwatch and then I'm going to paste the bounce expression that I've copied from the internet and I'll paste the link in the description. So now there are a few settings that you can change. For example, if you want to change the amplitude, I can bring that up to one and let's see what this looks like now. So now if I preview that back, all right, you can see that it kind of comes out towards you and then it kind of bounces as well. So we'll fix that up as well. We'll just come over here and we'll go to easy ease these keyframes. And I'm just gonna bring down the time of this animation. So I'm gonna just maybe put it to about, let's say 15 seconds. And so now if we see that, now it creates that really nice, you know, animation there. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight both those keyframes, go to the graph editor, make sure that you're in the speed graph editor. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to move this side over a little bit and move this side over a little bit like that. And so now that will create a bit of acceleration. And I think that looks pretty cool. Now the last bit of the animation that we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it scaling in until about here and then we'll replace the last frame with a zero um, scale percent. So I'm just gonna bring this up to maybe let's say 108. Now you don't wanna go too far where the text actually comes out of the screen, but I think that looks pretty good. And then we can just bring it back down to zero over there. So this is our end animation. And so there it goes back out. So that's looking pretty good and I'm pretty happy with that. So the final thing that we need to do is we just need to dress it all up. And what we're gonna do is we just are going to add a new adjustment layer. And the first adjustment layer, we are going to add some noise to this. So I'm just gonna look for noise and we'll bump that up to maybe like, let's say 10%. And yeah, and so once you've added the noise, that's it. You know, you can export your file and uh, yeah, that's about it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this short tutorial on how to create a heart loop animation. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.